today we're going to talk about goals and we're going to talk about mindset. And I think the two of those always are going to go hand in hand. And a lot of times when agents come to me looking for some type of solution, um, it's always, it always goes back to mindset, right? There are definitely practical solutions that we work on. And if you're not in the right state, none of that is really going to take root over the long term. And you're always going to be grinding, right? And just on that hamster wheel, just trying to somehow get ahead of just being in survival mode, which is where most of agents exist. Even successful agents exist in this survival mode forever. Their lifestyle gets better, and as their lifestyle gets better and their cost of living gets higher, they do produce more, and they are successful, but they're not building wealth and they're not going above and beyond what it costs them to live. So today we're gonna talk about mindset in terms of setting goals, and then we're actually gonna go into a system and a, a practical solution to be able to set goals and build passion behind them so that they're gonna drive you day in and day out, even on the days where you don't wanna do what you have to do, right? So who has goals that you've set? Awesome. And who has looked at those goals in the past month, in the past week? today. Awesome. And so tell me, just shout out, tell me some of those goals that you're reviewing and looking at. You had your hand up the whole time. Um, so. Well, I said one earlier was um, to have four years in expenses. And I just have to keep reminding myself that, so I make sure I write it down and mm -hmm. it's like every year in my head. So. Okay. Awesome. What are some other goals that you guys have? Awesome. I love that. What else? Any income goals? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have one. Uh, I'm taking my son to play basketball and um, trying to do that every day and, and staying on the court just so he can hit baskets because they got him in love with basketball. <laughs> awesome. And sunglasses. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Who else? Income goals, production goals. 85,000 a month. 85,000 a month. Awesome. Yeah. For our big club. I, I want to um, add 20 frontline recruits in the month of May. Awesome. I love it. So um, you guys are totally focused and just ruined this part of my presentation. Because usually what happens is, <laughs> usually what happens is people will shout out goals that are very vague, right? You know, they'll just say, I want to make six figures, or I want to make you know, this much, or I want to do 200 deals. And there's no real detail and clarity in it. It's just too vague. And what we're going to work on today is gaining clarity on your goals. And your, your goals are very specific, right? The one thing that I see a lot of people lacking is they have the goals. And even if they build out specifics around those goals, there's one thing that is missing that we're gonna work on today. And that is the feeling, the feeling that you get. Because all of these goals, everything that you do boils down to a feeling. And if you can tap into that feeling and put yourself in that place of when I attain these goals, this is what I'm gonna feel. And that feeling is gonna, infect, is gonna affect the people around me in this way. And we're gonna build a story around that so that you don't just have a dream board with some stuff on it. You have a story with a detail and a feeling that's gonna push you and is gonna drive you to actually a passion behind those goals. Sound good? Great. Awesome. So, okay, thanks. Oh yeah, wow, I'm blinded. <laughs> I'll be over here. Um, so let's, let's chunk this down a little bit. We have three sort of levels to goals, right? And the first level is survival. What does it cost you to live? And what do you have to do in terms of production in order to meet that goal, right? So later on in the presentation, we're actually gonna go through and do sort of a mini P&L on your life and what it costs you to live, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys already have that and you know that number. What happens is people are adverse to survival mode. They're kind of afraid of it and they're not accepting of it. So they tend to exist in that all of the time, like I said before, spinning on that wheel. 
just doing enough to actually get by. And getting by could mean that you live an amazing life, but you're not doing anything other than just kind of meeting right where you're at. And a lot of times when I ask people, all right, what does it cost you to live? And then we go through and we look at their production over time, they're right there. They're right there, they're just breaking even. So the mindset here is that we're not afraid of survival mode, right? Everybody has to actually crush survival mode. It's something that you have to do every single year because if you don't do it, you're not surviving. So if we look at survival mode as this first step, and when you set yourself up through production or through just building passive income so that that survival mode is met, what do we have? Freedom, right? We have financial freedom. When all of your bills are being paid by passive income, and that passive income could be a system in your business that is duplicatable and produces results over time, you have financial freedom. The second level is your success goal, right? So everything above and beyond your survival goal. We already know that we all have to exist through survival mode, and we're cool with that. We actually embrace it because we can't get to success without crushing survival. Make sense? So instead of being you know, feverishly worried and thinking things like I'm living paycheck to paycheck, what if you thought about it as I appreciate survival mode because that's gonna lead me to success mode. And your success goal for some people might even mean just another four or five transactions or another 40 or 50 transactions or another two agents signed on per month. It's not that far, it's just additional effort on top of what you're doing to crush survival mode and you're in success mode. A lot of people will peter out before they even get there because they're fatigued, right? Or they're not willing to do the work or they don't have enough grit. Most of the time it's because they don't see what lies beyond how close they are to success. And the agents who are willing to accept this are the ones that are gonna make it. A lot of agents that I've seen that got out of the business were so close. They were so close. They were another six, 12 months from consistently doing what they were already doing to being in success mode. So the third level is significance, right? What do you intend to give back? So you've crushed survival mode, right? We are in success mode. We're, we're living the life we want. We're building investments. We're building wealth, right? Now we have the opportunity to give back. So what are you guys looking at in your, when you're setting your goals that is this third level, where your life is so amazing, your production is so amazing that you could freely just give back. And that could mean monetary, right? It could be just time. It could mean that you're doing something every week or every month to give back. I think it's really important that we actually build this stuff into our goals. Because if we're just setting goals to get by, it's not fun. It's not worth it. And if you just take these extra two steps and look at survival mode as this ladder that's gonna get you into success and significance. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have a much better time doing it, right? Your experience is gonna be better, and that's what we're all going for. Just like I said in the beginning, everything that we do is tied to a feeling. So when we tell ourselves our own story about that feeling, your experience is gonna be better. And what happens when your experience, selfishly, personally, what happens when your experience is better? You enjoy yourself, you feel great. And a byproduct of that, everybody else feels great being around you. And a byproduct of that is usually, when you're in that mode, trust goes up, resistance goes down, and business gets done. So you guys can already start to see that as you operate from a place of abundance, and you check yourself first, and you make sure that your experience is the best possible experience it could be, all of a sudden, you're gonna be doing more business, you're gonna be having more conversations, you're gonna be operating with ease and flow, right? Brett, that's the name of the game, right? We always talk about this, and you know, we have coaches that, <laughs> we pay them a lot of money to just teach us how to be in ease and in flow, because the number one thing is your experience. Everything else happens more frequently and better when your experience is there. Does that make sense so far? So survival mode, crushed it. Success, crushed it. Significance, crushed it. And what we're gonna do later is we're gonna build these goals out and we're gonna build the feelings, we're gonna tell the story around it, um, and we're gonna write 
what's called a prophecy letter. Um, it's really exciting, and as we get into that, I'm gonna explain a little bit more. Some of you guys may have done something like this, but it's a letter that you're writing to your friends and family dated December 31st, 2019. And then you go into telling the story about how you crushed all of these goals. It's gonna be fun. Cool. So you are actually, in this business or in any business, you're never more than five years from wherever you wanna be. And when I started out in this business, I was prospecting based. I literally locked myself in a closet for like five years. And all I did was make calls, right? I was training with the Mike Ferry organization and the model was get on the phone, make calls for three and a half hours a day for the rest of your life, right? And a couple of years into it, you know, I, I had several coaches, I'm a coaching addict, and um, I said to one of my coaches, well, when do I get to be me, right? When do I get to, to be myself? My big why, my passion in life, and the reason why I'm doing all this is music, right? I'm a musician, I love writing music, I love producing, I love creating music, and I discovered early on in my career that that was the thing that really drove me and fulfilled me, so I wanna build a business that gets me enough time so that I could do what I want and create music, right? So I asked my coach, when do I get to chill out? Right? This is intense. I'm getting shit beat out of me on the phone every single day. <laughs> when does, what, what happens? And he said, look, if you're willing to do what nobody else will do for five years, you could do whatever you want after that. If you're willing to do what nobody else will do for five years, then you could go do whatever you want. It's been eight years since that conversation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't prospect for, for business right now. Things have changed drastically in that time, right? So I think for us now, it's more like two and a half years. With all the technology, you know, with every, all the skill sets that we have now, literally two and a half years, if you're willing to commit to doing something, and that might be prospecting for business, that might mean prospecting for talent, that might mean focusing on agent attraction, whatever you do, two and a half to three years, you'll be able to do whatever you want for the rest of your life. So what did that do for me when he said that? It gave me a means to an end, right? It gave me this goal that I knew, all right, this is gonna be somewhat painful, but I'm gonna do it because number one, I've got all my goals set up. Number two, I know I only have to do it for another four years, right? So what is your time frame? When you're setting your goals, when you're building your business plan, Right, when you're working with your masterminds, what is the end game for you? Put a date on it. I had an agent that uh, joined us at EXP and she's phenomenal, an amazing salesperson, and she works another job, uh, just waiting tables, bartending and stuff, and the goal was to go into real estate full-time, and I know we hear that a lot from agents. My goal is to get in full-time into real estate, and that's a great, that's a great goal. Uh, the challenge is that nobody puts a date on it. So we put a date on it. September 3rd is our last day of work at this other job. We already planned a party for her. We made it real. We put details behind it. So when you're setting your goals, details are key, right? One of your goals is, I wanna go on vacation. So if you're on my team and you tell me that, the next day, I better be getting a picture from you sitting with a travel agent. Do travel agents, is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> or sitting in front of your computer, right? I want to see your itinerary within three days, right? Brett, back in the day when we did this exercise, right? Some of the things you said, what did you say? You wanted a five series, right? Yeah. So the next day, he texts me a picture of him test driving a five, right? And then what, four months later, you were driving it? I still have the same car, yeah. You still have it, yeah. <laughs> and one of the other goals is Hawaii. You wanted to go to Hawaii, right? Yeah. So cool, here, I'm gonna connect you with my travel agent booked it, you went to Hawaii, right? Yeah, three travel agents. Yeah, so if you didn't do that, like if you didn't actually take the action and make it real, that doesn't mean you necessarily wouldn't have gotten it, but how did it feel once, you, once we actually did this exercise and you put dates on it? Because you're, you're actually moving towards something. When your goals are too vague, your effort and your results are also gonna be vague. When you don't give yourself an out and you actually put dates on it, put detail behind it, it becomes real, and it becomes exciting. I don't know about you guys, I'm very competitive, right? So if I have something that I'm working towards, I work much more efficiently, and I work smarter, right? Totally. So what happens is, in building our business, the number one thing 
that you have to master is, I believe, is repetitious boredom. The monotony of doing everything the same exact way consistently for a long period of time. That's really the only thing that works in building a, b a big business through lead generation, but we get bored. And so mastering the art of that repetitious boredom is what leads to success. Because otherwise, there's so many shiny toys in our feed that are going to tell you don't have to do what actually works, right? So now more than ever, you're going to cause yourself to be distracted. We're going to talk later a little bit about <clears throat> your gremlin and your mindset, right? A lot of you guys have heard the term drunk monkey. There is a book that I highly recommend you guys read called Taming Your Gremlin. And it talks about building systems to be able to control your mind. The gremlin is this thing in your mind. And it exists to take you out of the present moment and bring you into the world of mind. So you hear this term, living in the present moment, a lot, right? Yet people don't actually know what that feels like or even know what it is or how to get there. This book details out how to do it, right? So I was talking to an agent a couple of weeks ago. And I've been coaching him for about a month. And he said, you know what? I found myself in the world of mind, ruminating, which is we do 90% of the day is us having conversations in our minds, like mental patients, right? And he found himself doing that. And he simply noticed that he was doing that. He called awareness to it. And then he brought what the book calls your spotlight of awareness into his surroundings. And he described just looking at a tree with a ray of sunlight coming through the tree. And for a moment, he was just there. That's all that existed for him was this appreciation for a tree and a ray of sunlight. And then, boom, right back into the world of mind for the remainder of the day. So what we work on is how many of those moments can you string together? Because when you're not relying on any outside circumstance to cause you to be in gratitude or to be happy, that is what living in the moment is. When you can simply notice something and, cause, and call appreciation to it, it could be how a breeze feels on your skin. It could be how your clothing feels on your skin. When you are able to control that and bring your attention to that, that is what living in the, the, the present moment is, right? And the more moments we could string together, the more natural it's gonna be for us to go to that place. We're gonna talk a lot about mindset today because I actually believe that happiness is a skill and a system Happiness is a skill that is worth developing. You have to practice. And I noticed years ago that once you do develop those skills and you do develop that system, it's not, it doesn't just take root and you're good for the rest of your life. It's a consistent practice that we have to work on, right? So a lot of times we depend on outside circumstances to cause happiness. Yep, you take a listing, right? You sign an agent. It makes it much easier for you to be in that state, right? But when that mojo wears off, what are you using to call yourself back to that present moment and to gain appreciation for those moments? Because that's, to me, that's true happiness. When I could just sit and appreciate the world, the people, the energy around me without having to rely on anything else, that's true happiness. And so we practice that day in and day out, right? So repetitious boredom, there's only a small percentage of people who, who could actually handle that boredom. Otherwise, we go self-sabotage, right? Have you ever seen somebody who's on the right track and they're doing great, they're building their business, and all of a sudden you find out like for three weeks they were doing, they were effing off doing something that was not what was working for them because of the repetitious boredom. <clears throat> so let's go over stuff. Are you guys cool? Are we all right? Okay. Does my head look as heavy as it feels? <laughs> Pickleback shots. All right, so the first step is get real, right? Accept reality, get out of victim mode and out of drama mode. So instead of existing in this victim mode and saying, why? We want to switch from why to how. When you switch your mindset from why to how, you go from victim mode to opportunity mode, right? So you guys maybe have heard me say this before. I believe that failure is the key to your success. I believe that failure is an ingredient into your success. The phrase failure is not an option does not exist for me. 
Failure is inevitable. In fact, it's in my business plan. And I look forward to it, and I celebrate it when it happens. Why would I do that? Because you learn from it. Because it causes you su success, right? Every successful person has had massive failure along the way, right? So why would I be resistant to something that's going to cause me to succeed? When I have it in my business plan, I'm expecting it, and it happens, and I celebrate it because now I get to look for the opportunities. What happens is I go to a place of abundance immediately. Instead of existing in drama and victim and why and why and why, it goes to how. How do I make this work for me? How do I find gratitude in this? And it's not automatic. I have coaches, I have friends, I have masterminds who have to remind me when I have an epic failure, like, dude, that's in your business plan. What are you doing? Like, go find gratitude and move forward. It's not easy. But when you have the systems in place to do it, it becomes very, very practical, right? So accept reality in any situation that you're in. Instead of worrying about why am I here, accept the fact that you are there and where are you going to go from here? How do I move forward from here, right? The second step is set your mind. So work on working on your intentions. Does anybody here do affirmations, stuff like that? You do? Cool. What does that look like, if you don't mind me asking? And when do you do it? What do you do? What's the process? Anybody who raised their hand just want to share with us? Yeah. Okay, great. And while you're doing that, do you find your mind starting to drift and? Yeah, and then you think back to your mom's thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, I mean, and it's like, once you get into the mode and you get open to your mind, it's like, okay. How long did it take you doing that before you started to notice results? Like months. Months? I mean, squirrel brain is like the default setup. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Thank you. Anybody else do affirmations? Want to share with us what you do? Yeah. So I, I think uh, I think it's really important to have clarity and intentionality. And one of the things that's worked so well for me is just clarifying what's the most important things to me. And I list those five things. And every morning, I look at those five most important things. I write them down. I read them and I think about them. What does this look like today? Can you share with us, like today, what were your sure. a few of your? So my five most important things are to stay close to God, to love my wife, to rebuild my business, to uh, be committed to all my critical relationships, and to bring goodness to every situation. And so every day, I, I know what I have to do for every one of those things. Mm -hmm. And does, do they change? Or are yes, kind they of, do. Yeah. They always, they're always... So it, it, you'll know when they need to change, mm -hmm. when something happens, <laughs> where yeah. you have to redirect your attention because of all the things that are important to us. There's certain things that have to rise to the top that are the most important that you have to work on every day. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes we go into this spiritual realm and, and doing things like this when the shit hits the fan, right? <laughs> Um, and what we want to talk about today is doing it constantly, all the time, even when things are going great, right? Did you have something you want to share as well? I just do it with my kids. So I tell them who they are and how I see them, and then I tend to repeat it to themselves, and they all of a sudden start telling me who they think I am. Okay. I am. How'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. That's amazing. How old are your kids? Um, I do it for little ones. They're little. four. Yeah, I, so my best accountability partner is my, my five-year-old. <laughs> we do gratitudes every night. And um, it's, you know, it started out with uh, grateful for candy. And, you know, grateful. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, one day he just said, I'm grateful for my heart because it just keeps beating. I don't even have to try, right? <laughs> he stole that from me. But... You know, it, it's, it's great to see them start to really, like, get what, what it is that we're doing. Sometimes we have to go through the motions and, like, fake it till you make it. 
and embed these commands in, in, in your mind uh, to filter out everything else that's gonna take its place, right? So, awesome. Thank you guys for, for sharing that. Um, so we wanna keep our intentions clear. We wanna keep them specific. and We wanna do them consistently all the time. We're building this system. We're training our minds to go in a different direction than its default. Our default is fight or flight, right? Our default is to, to run, right? And what we, you know, for however many years we've been following that script, it takes time to follow a new script. So keep it simple. Establish a practice, whether it's in the morning or the evening, that every day this is, it's as important to me as a you know, $2 million listing appointment would be. It's, it has to happen every single day, because I know where I go over time if I'm not doing this, right? I'm going right back to my mindset coach in shambles and be like, oh, I gotta start over. <clears throat> so accept reality, set your mind, set your intentions, take action, right? Take charge of the things that you can control. So the number one thing is when we're in why mode, Usually those are things that we're ruminating on that we cannot control. They already happened. Yet we're analyzing them as if we can do something about it. When you're in how mode, you're establishing what can I do now? What can I do to make that better? How is this an opportunity for me, right? So taking action could mean something as simple as just being aware that a certain situation happened and you're moving forward. Or it could be establishing some type of productivity in your business. Whatever it is, as soon as you figure out that it's something that's possible, you have to make it absolutely necessary and take massive action, right? I mean, it was a big decision for us to move our business to eXp. And Brett and I, as soon as we saw it, right, like you say all the time, we couldn't, we couldn't unsee it. So we can decide to take four, five, six months and analyze the shit out of it, or we could do what we did and, and get it done in a month, right? Because we, we knew it was the opportunity we take massive action. That's just how we operate. Is it, is it still legal? No? All right, great. <laughs> yeah. Well, KW says it is illegal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and don't give up. Don't give up. Expect failure, like we were saying before, and expect the messiness. So as you get bigger, as your business gets bigger, as your life gets bigger, it gets messier. It's never gonna be perfect. So for years, I was trying to get it perfect and nice, neat, wrapped up with a bow on it. And the day I realized like, man, this is gonna be a shit show no matter what. Let's just go. Let's make it as crazy as it possibly could be. I had this conversation with my lead generation department the other day of like, wait, but if we do this, you know, our goal right now is to get 100 seller leads a day coming in. And the, the, we were talking, they were talking about, well, if we do this, this is gonna break over here, and this is gonna happen, and this is gonna happen. I was like, cool, let me know when that happens. <laughs> right? It's gonna be a mess no matter what, so why wait? You know, with anything in your life, it's gonna be a mess. Just go, take action. We'll figure out the mess later. Any questions so far? Cool. No? So vision, clarity, and detail. Just like we were saying before, when you're setting your goals, dig, deep, dig deep into what it looks like. If it's a vacation, if it's a trip, how are you gonna fly? Are you gonna fly economy or first class, right? Which seats do you prefer on the plane? How much luggage do you have to bring, right? What are the connections you have to establish um, both spiritually and Uber-wise? Get as much detail as you can to make it a reality. And we'll explain why that is important later on. So having clarity around your big, your big why, right? How many people here know what their big why is? I, I found that a lot of people don't yet know. Does, any, does anybody know like what your big why is or one of them? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna set goals and then we're gonna establish the feeling. Because a lot of times when I work with agents who don't know what their big why is, it turns out that it's happiness. If you boil it down, as much as possible, it just turns into freedom and happiness. Yeah? My big why is uh, to create a lifestyle where I don't have to take a vacation from. In order to do that, you gotta have freedom, and uh, you start making those things happen. That's awesome. So you create a lifestyle that you don't have to take a vacation from. So your entire life is a vacation. 
I love that. I'm going to steal that. Mm -hmm. Soon as that says a lot of people. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> right. So how do we find what these feelings are, right? It's just like when you're working with a seller um, or a buyer, establishing, you know, it's the same thing. Their motivation is tied to a feeling as well. And it becomes much easier to do business when you know what that feeling is and you can tie into it, right? So when we talk, do you wanna, Brett, you wanna role play with me real quick? So you're a seller, right? We're just talking about your motivation. So um, you said you wanna to move to Florida, right? So what's important to you about moving to Florida? Uh, the tax benefits, it's, it's, it's a big thing. Nope. The tax benefits. The tax benefits, okay, yeah. great. Anything else? Uh, and just the weather too, we're sick of New Jersey winters. Okay, great. So tax benefits, better weather, how is, all that important to you? Um, for us, I mean, you know, with the new tax code, we're going to save quite a bit of money in that aspect. It's going to help us plan for retirement uh, properly. And then obviously just the weather. I get to golf all year round. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So golf sounds like a lot of financial benefits, better weather, right? So, all right, three months from now, we're sitting here. We've closed on your home. You're living in Florida, right? You're golfing. The weather is better. You have better tax benefits, you have a better financial plan, ultimately, what will all that do for you? How will it make you feel? Happy. Happy. Yeah. It's a great feeling, right? Yeah. You know, all we need to do in order to get you there and make you happy is sign the contract, right? So when you're talking to a seller just like that, talk to yourself the same way. Talk to your agents the same way. When you're, if you're sitting with an agent that you're going to recruit, go through these criteria questions. So it's basically, you know, What's important to you about this move? What's important to you about growing your business? What's important to you about being with the right brokerage for you, right? And then you repeat and approve what they say, and you dig a little bit deeper. Why is that important to you? And you dig a little bit deeper. Okay, so a year from now, we're sitting here having a conversation about how this was the most amazing move you could have made for you and your business, right? Ultimately, what is all of this gonna do for you? And most of the time, it's gonna come down to freedom, happiness. And when you're in that mode and you have them deep into those feelings, right? That's where you can create movement. That's where you could just naturally close. It's a great feeling, isn't it? All we need to do is go to join.exprealty.com and we can make that feeling a reality for you or whatever, guys. Do you see what I mean? So when you're setting your goals, think that way. Think about getting yourself into, all right, I want this. How is it going to make me feel? What's important to me about that? Right? Master these criteria questions because it really is a way to figure out what your big why is. Or figure out, I don't know why this is so important to me. Why is golf important to you? Right? Well, I like to be outside, I like to smoke cigars, right? Well, what is, you know, how is that important to you? What does that feel like? Right? So practice, practice this stuff. Um, you're going to discover that a lot of things that you don't think you're that passionate about, you are really passionate about. And it's for reasons that you wouldn't think you're passionate about them, that, if that makes sense. I said passionate five times. <clears throat> oh, be passionate, cool. All right, so discovering our big why, right? So what is, this is my guitar. You could tell from my amazing Photoshop skills, I just friggin' pl plopped it in there. So, Back when I got into the business, I was, I was a lender. How are we doing on time, by the way? Are we good? Cool. So I was a lender for about 10 years until 2009 when lending disappeared for like six months. It was, there was, it was just gone, right? What I was doing for a living was gone. I would write loans, and then we would go to close, and we couldn't close because the bank didn't exist anymore. Um, there, was a, <laughs> there was a website called mortgageimplode.com. Like, you go there, and you just see banks just going, by the minute, going out of business. Um, and so uh, I was pretty young, and I had just opened up a branch of this lending company in Hoboken, where I lived. <laughs> and right after I opened it, this, this happened, and my, you know, my business disappeared. So for four or five, six months, I was just living off my savings, right? It got bad. It got really bad. By the time I figured out that I was going to go into real estate, I was in debt. Um, pretty bad, and you know the collections, right? The 
you know, the constant calls, the negative bank accounts, all that stuff. And I had a decision to make because short selling my condo was, uh, it sucked, right? Uh, but it, it, it was nothing that I couldn't overcome. Uh, losing the, the BMW, right? Um, all of the things that I was, I was doing pretty well in mortgages and I had a good life. All of those things going away, um, they hurt, but it didn't hurt as much as this. So I bought this guitar in 2004 um, and I loved this guitar. They only made a couple hundred of them. It, for anybody who knows music or guitars, it's a Paul Reed Smith custom semi hollow body. Um, and I paid like two grand for it and I played the shit out of it. I probably played 50 shows with it. I loved it. It was just like a part of me. I loved it. I don't know if you guys have things like that. Shoes, purses. My wife has a lot of those. Um, <laughs> and, and, and nothing hurt more than when I had to go to the guitar bar in Hoboken and sell this guitar for $1,000 to pay my rent that month. Um, the short sale, losing the car, all that stuff didn't nearly hurt as much as that. I actually was in tears when I had to do it because it was a part of me. And I said to myself, actually my wife said to me, we were sitting on the couch, and she said, well, what are you gonna do? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, this, this sucks, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And she's like, I think you do. What are you gonna do? And I sat there for a minute and I said, I'm gonna get this guitar back. I'm going to get this guitar back. And it became this fuel for me to dive into this business and just crush it. And I knew the whole time that, yes, I was gonna get out of debt, I was gonna get us another place, right? I was going to get through success mode, I'm sorry, through survival mode back into success mode. And at the end of the day, I was gonna find this guitar and I was gonna buy it. If I had to pay 10 grand for it, I was gonna do it, right? So for years, this was a driving force for me because I was so passionate about music and I was so, I used this opportunity to fuel myself and my desire, right? Um, years later, about three and a half years ago, I was doing this presentation uh, in, in Hoboken, and I had all these searches set up for this guitar. It was really hard to find. eBay, all of these different searches, and, and I just couldn't find it. So I did this presentation. That night I went home, and 100%, this is a true story, I got that notification that the guitar was available for 2300 bucks, something like that, and I bought it on eBay. And it was the biggest win I ever had. Like, it was so big for me, right? I was never gonna go back to that place. I'm gonna build wealth, I'm gonna build my business, I'm gonna build all my investments so that if, every, if the shit hits the fan, I'm still not gonna be back where I was, right? I'm never gonna be below success mode. I'm always gonna be working towards, uh, sorry, survival mode. I'm always gonna be working towards success and significance. So what is it that is fueling you guys? What is it? Is it, if it's your family, right, what does that look like? What's the detail around that? How are you gonna create an amazing life for them and for yourself? Really dig into these goals as we work on this. <clears throat> because if we stay too vague, like I said, your production's gonna be vague as well, and you're probably not gonna hit it. When you get clarity, when we did that exercise and you wrote your goals, you wrote your prophecy letter, we talked again in October and it was like, boom, 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 they all happened, right? Because we put the vision out there, we put clarity around it, right? Cool. I still have the guitar. I love it. So what we were talking about before, right? People are afraid of failure. They look at either you're gonna win or you're gonna fail. In any situation, in your business in general, in any conversation that you have, right? They look at a possible outcome of winning or failing. When successful people know that that is actually what it does look like. Those failures are the way to get to your success. And I tell my agents all the time that when you're talking to a prospect, right? Don't look at that prospect as one opportunity to either win or not win. Look at it as five opportunities. Because if you build rapport the right way and you build that relationship, Everybody knows five people who are gonna do something in real estate in the next year. So if you operate with that mindset that every opportunity is going to come with failure and there's gonna be multiple opportunities, what happens is when you do fail, inevitably, because I've never met anybody successful that didn't have massive failures along the way, instead of being worried about failure, instead of being, staying away from taking action because you're afraid to fail, 
when you embrace it and you know it's going to happen, that's what it looks like. Does anybody resonate with that? Has anybody operated from this mindset or been afraid of failure in the past and then embraced it and saw that opportunities came more frequently? I see it all the time. So expect it. Be OK with the chaos. Don't be a psychic in predicting what you think is going to happen. Going back to gremlin taming. So I had an agent come to me and was like having this, it was like 9.30, he called me, and he was having this situation um, that was concerning him. It wasn't about real estate, it was about something else, right? And he called me for advice. And I said, dude, it's 9.30, why are we talking about this now? You should be on the phone, right? You should be prospecting. And the answer was, I can't prospect because I can't concentrate because I keep thinking about this situation. So I said, okay, what time were you done doing lead generation? 11 o'clock. All right, so from 11 to 11.30, let's time block your bum out time. That's gonna be the time where you bum out about this situation and worry about it, right? And he did that, and he put this into his schedule. As soon as he did that, he freed up his mindset to be able to go do lead generation, right? So sometimes we have these situations that come up, and if you schedule your time to bum out about them, if you actually schedule it, now you could focus on what, what you're supposed to be doing, right? What I used to have is, as I was doing lead generation, things would come up. Oh, that inspection's taking place today. Oh, this appraisal appeal, or whatever it is. And it could be very easily that I go and get out of lead generation and go focus on this. But I just had a, a pad, and I would just write it down. All right, do this, do this, do this. And then I could focus on, on doing lead generation. I didn't use it. There's this you know, analogy that I use. Is like, let's say you guys woke up, and you went outside, and you had a flat tire. What would you do? Call AAA, right? Change it. What? Go, oh, I think you said go back to bed. I'd say, yeah, be mad. Go back to bed. <laughs> drive, drive the other car. So you mean you guys wouldn't go and slash the other three tires? Because <laughs> that's what we do in our business a lot of times, right? We're going along. We're doing our lead generation, doing whatever we're doing, and this happens, and we completely slash all the tires and go over here and never make it back, right? <laughs> so if you build into your schedule time to bum out or time to worry about things. You're going to find that when that point in your schedule comes, you won't even remember what it is. <laughs> All right, cool. So what we're going to do is going into actually setting your goal. So I want you guys to take out a piece of paper. I want you to put a line down the middle and then a line across the top. And take some time later today or tomorrow to actually go in and do this exercise. If you don't already have a P&L, um, to actually figure this stuff out. It's really important. On the, left, on the top left corner, I want you to write your income goal, net income to you for the year. And then under that, on the left side of the page, we're going to write down all of our expenses, everything that, co that we have to pay in order to live. So we're taking 30% for taxes, 10% for savings, and then whatever coaching you have, whatever staff you have, your, your living, your rent, your mortgage, car insurance, anything that you could think of that it costs you to live. And then we're going to total that for the year. So you could see in this example here, the income goal is 175, right? And then the total expenses is 123. So just ignore where it says net income there. Um, that's total expenses. So we're going to subtract all the expenses from your income goal. And when you do that, there is hopefully some money left over. Um, most of the time we do this, there's not. Most of the time when agents do this, if they're being honest, it's right there. It's break even, which is what we were talking about before. They're setting themselves up to be in survival mode. Right? So if you don't have a significant surplus after you subtract your expenses from your income goal, cross out your income goal and increase it by 50 grand or 100 grand. We could do that. Right? Just make it more. So what we're going to do is with the, with the surplus that you have after your income goal, subtract all of your expenses, your net income is going to be the amount of money that is left over. In this case, it's $51,800. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to spend every dollar of that in setting your goals. You're going to spend every single dollar. It sounds easy, but it, a lot of times it's not. So shout out some examples of some goals that you're going to, you have, whatever that number is, you have all that money to spend today on what is going to be your goals for the rest of the year. Just shout out some shit, isn't it? Kentucky, Kentucky Derby. All right, 2,000 bucks, right? Plus, how much do you want to gamble? Another two grand? <laughs> You're going to win, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. So that, here's an example. That's four grand, right? Six grand if you go big. We still have, whatever, 45 grand left over. A month in Hawaii. A month in Hawaii. Nice. Where would you stay? Okay. All right, so you did, you did it already, you're gonna do it again? Yeah. What, what would you do better this time? I would, I would do, what would I do better? I wouldn't change condos. I would stay. Stay in the same place. Stay in the same place. Okay. Yeah, what, what else would you do better, like baller style? Um, would you fly first class? I would buy a place there. Well, buy a place while you're there, awesome. How much do you have to put down? Do we have any agents in Hawaii that we know of in Honey Badgers? Cool. Can you connect her with them? Oh, can somebody connect you with that and um, a lender in Hawaii that could do pre approval for you? Detail, right? Make it real. Make it no, no. I know. <laughs> Do it. You got cold feet. <laughs> got cold feet. What else? A watch. Anybody like watches? That's 15 grand, right? A purse. 15 grand. What's that? Pogo stick up there. Pogo, yeah, why does Pogo stick up there? <laughs> right? How much do you want to contribute? How much do you want to invest? For me, investment is actually on this column. It's not, investment is not a goal. It's, it's a necessity for me, right? So. That might be true for you too, but if not, how much do you want to invest this year, right? So as you can see, we want to be as detailed as possible um, with, with building these out. And when we go into the prophecy later, you'll see why, right? Because the more detail we put around it, the more real it becomes, the more you sweat. The more you sweat, the more likely you are to actually work towards that goal and do the things that you might not have done if you didn't have it set, right? So take some time and go through all of this. You're 529, your kid's college fund. One of my goals was to fund my kids' college fund by the time they were six through um, profit share and now through revenue share, right? So every month, my financial planner goes in and grabs uh, the direct deposit and takes half of it, puts it into Emerson's 529 account. The other goes into Everett's 529 account. And about a year and a half ago, he emailed me and was like, we got to stop doing this because we're going to overfund it, right? Because I was purposeful about that. I, that was something that was really important to me. So go through and build this, build this out, and then the next thing we're going to do, so we have five minutes left, is talk about the prophecy letter, right? So here's how mine starts. This is from last year. Dear friends and family, it's December 31st, 2019, and I'm sitting on the porch overlooking this mountain in Aspen. Everyone's still sleeping. We're going to make breakfast and head to the lodge around 10. That's how my prophecy letter started, because one of my goals was to take my entire family my wife and kids, her entire family, my parents, my sister, my brother, all their kids to Aspen for New Year's for uh, five days, right? Anybody have any, any idea what that costs? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> it's 60 grand to do it right. There's like 35 of us, um, right? But this is the setting. Like, this is how I'm describing. And I'm happy to send my letter to you guys as well. Um, just to give you some ideas around how, but this is how detailed it is. I'm there, right? I'm describing what it's like. You know, I could smell that they're making breakfast. We're heading, like I planned this all out. And so what we want to do is write this letter. I do mine in October, but you can do yours now for the rest of the year, starting now for the rest of the year. I do mine in October for the following year. And guys, it's creepy. 
it, everything actually happens. I know three, four years ago, I described having this growth director and having multiple teams in different markets before I even knew that that was a thing. And now I have eight teams in, in all these different markets, and I have several directors of growth and several team leaders. So be prepared that what you put into this letter is going to happen if you're passionate about it. So what we want to do is paragraphs around these um, kind of bullet points here. So your primary relationship, right? How has, you know, it's December 31st. How has your primary relationship been escalated to a 10? How amazing has that been and why? Your family, your business, your finances, right? When you're at the best possible place you could, you could imagine in your finances, what does it look like? What did you create financially? Spirituality, recreation, what are you doing that you weren't doing before that's fun, right? How are you giving back? And then at the end, expressing gratitude to whatever, the universe, God, whatever it is, for you being able to obtain all this. What will happen is it's going to take you a couple of hours, right? And you're going to get chills. You probably will tear up if you're doing it the right way. And then throughout the year, Chris, right, you go back and look at your prophecy letter, and what happens? It's eerie. It's eerie. And does it drive you? Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people will mail this letter to themselves or like have somebody mail the letter so it arrives. But I just keep mine in Evernote, and I go back and I reference it um, from time to time. So guys, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, thank you for putting this together. Uh, it's been amazing so far. And uh, I'm really grateful that I get to share this stuff with you guys. So um, that's about all I have for today. Thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Sweet. Thank you.